at the beginning, draw yourself up a outline of the actual towels in your table. Well, what I did was I measured from corner to corner. I got that, I knew that was 20 by 20 extrusion. Drew the 20 boxes, 120 degrees apart on the corner. I just made it that dimension, I think it was 229 off hand. So I draw it up, I find out the center from here to there is 153 and it's 83 mil in for that box. But I also drew up the other dimensions. 70 build area, if you can only build within that 70 radius, you'll only be able to print up a box 99 millimeters square. If you can go to the excess of the 77, so up to the actual outline, you can build a box 140 millimeters square. And in the corner here of the box, you could build 98.99, so almost 99 millimeter from here to there. I then drew up the safety area of where this team needs to miss the cap screw, the gotcha. That was 62 and 64. So that then made me think, well, I've had the bed setting, so I replaced all that. I took the cap screw out and made up an L bracket and I can remove that so I can now get the full print area or safety in if I happen to press the wrong button that goes the wrong way. It won't crash in any of them. Draw yourself up this diagram because when you're going to do the tower positions to get your table level, you need to come down zero, zero, zero. You need a formula to calculate the angles and you'll see theta sine and cos blah blah blah. Or you can just draw it up like it is there. Now originally I was going to probe at the corner of the 140 where it intersects just there. But all the information they have, they seem to set the probe there. So it's basically from the centre, 35mm this way and it's either 60.62 to the left and 60.62 to the right. So that, that's your simple probe. So you can calculate it and you come out, out the same way. Since this is at the point of the circle, that then is just 70, which is your print radius. 70, 0, 35, 60.62, 35, 60.22. And you can add your minus for the necessary ones as you go. So that will give you where to probe. Now, the other thing you need to do is I use the packers, but I've had a rethink and I've then just gone and decided to put on the little justice screw. I've used the M2, which is 0.4 of a mil. If you get a Phillips head, you know, the plus each little 90 degrees is 0.1 of a millimeter. People ha have a lot of problems setting it up to do the bed. It's fairly easy, repetitive, but it's fairly easy, especially if you think about it for a minute. Originally I used to go out and measure this and measure that and, and I thought, no, no. The guy who designed the printer thought about it. He says, I'll make this offset 20 mil, I'll make that 15. He didn't say I'll make that 11.23 or 5 or what. If you get this SDL file, you will find that it's 20 millimeter. If you just measure the whole distance where the screws go to the center bore, it's 20 mil. So that distance is 20. Remember that we said from here to here, these to be 230. So it's 230. And I already mentioned the carriage dimension 15. They're exact numbers. Then the other one is just the center. With this drawing, mine's 153.2. That From that drawing, it was 153 point such and such. Well, the guy wouldn't make it 153. So I entered in 230. I entered in 153, 20 and 15. So if you enter those figures, 230, 153, 20 and 15, and if you've been following this build, 3D print for a build, that should get you pretty close to start with. So then what you do is you add some buttons, some macro buttons. So instead of just typing all the time, you should have just a little plus and you just click on that. And what we want to do is to send it down to zero, bed center, X, Y, zero. And remember those other three dimensions I give you, X and 70 and 35 and 62 and all that. That's what you program in. Rather than waiting, you can do enter in the F speed. Now I'll just click on the edit custom button. Now remember all the beginning, X, Y, Z, R, G, B, red, green, blue. I hope you remember that and done yours. X tower, X is R, red. X tower well, was a button. Now the command is G1, we want it to move. Minus 60.62 for X, Y minus 35, and Z is 10. I always sit 10 above the table I always fast travel to 10. Now the feed and you might see in other videos when you're home you're going down very slow. Well the F command is a speed and I put in 7000 which is millimeters per second I think it is and if you divide it by 60 you then get it for millimeters per minute. You'll see they're set up for the speed. So you do that and then you have got your X tower 
Done, you do okay. Up comes a button. Do another one for the white tower. Just click on it, add another one. Green this time. And you type in the color name, green. Then you do another one for the Z tower, which is blue. Then you do one for the center. I was gonna make it orange, but if you put in orange, it becomes a dirty red. So I just typed in pink and it came out black. I also added a M114. So you, you just have to type in where, where you've got the code here, M114, and that will then read it. So you can have as many, a lot of buttons, and you just put whatever codes their shortcuts save your typing all the time so what you then do is I'll power it up so we're getting any noise the end stops they have to be parallel with the table so my top frame is parallel with, with the end of the shaft it's really the amount of travel on each tower each column from the limit switch to when the nozzle touches the table needs to be the same so you can measure it and this that and the other thing but that's what we're trying to achieve so when the table's flat it comes back it's zero in the centre and zero in all the corners. When you get the corners all zero, the center may be higher or lower, and that's with where you have to adjust an offset, but that then changes something you have to go. But I'm just showing you up this stage. So we'll connect, we'll do a home. Now just try your M14 button and see that it's working all right and your code's fine. Now your Z, you've set before. It changes all the time when you make different adjustments. What I did was, I made those heights 10, so I go center. That speed is at the 7,000. So you can put in different numbers. I done a test and different speeds and some you hear, and some are good and so work out how rigid and, and good your machine is to make the adjustments. So I'm using the five, you, you're using the four. I just go one, two, three, four, clear. Now, if I go five, it touches. If I go point one up, slides under. And you may be saying, look mate, five, it's below. Why is that? Well, what we're doing is we're setting the nozzle to be a paper point one above. And you'll see some on some info, they say, oh, you know, get the feel, make sure it slides the same under each other. Simple fact, it moves in point one steps. If it's half a point one step above this one, when you go down point one, it's now pushed into it, say, 0.05. If it's just up the top and it's just missing by, if it's just above 0.01, if you press point one, it's then crushing it by 0.9. Where they say, oh, the feel, no. Touches or not touches. Simple as that. Not, oh, I can feel this a bit thicker. No, that's that's what comes out of a bull's rear end. You can't adjust to little bit, it's those steps. That's what the steps are. So that's why with this, it either goes under or it doesn't. You, you can't crush it. What I then do, I then go one, two, three, four, I put the paper underneath and I'm not sure that go down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten is tight, go back up, just sliding, do the M114, and it's on zero. So I know that's, I'm not going to ram in other. The other thing too is that some setups, they say, oh, type it in and set these buttons to go to Z0. In the error, you're ramming your, your nozzle into your bed. Stupid. Use your accurate tool steel, set it above, work off five, make all your, all your adjustments there, then as a final check, just see if your paper goes. So now you've programmed your four corners in. We'll do the X tower, so we'll come across. Now you don't know where it is, because you've only just put those figures. You don't know how far your end stops are, so it could ram into something, it could not. We're 10 mil above, we'll go down five, I've already set this up. You go down five and see if it clears. If it's hitting, you then just go back up. You then get M114 till it just clears it. So it hits, point one up, clears. That's your set. You then, in that original setup sheet we said, you know, to have X tower, M114, five, and you say, okay, it's now, say it's 4.7 millimeters instead of five. So that means it's 0.3 difference. So then you go, I like to go back to, that way if there's something out you're not going to scratch your table. Go to your tower, one, two, three, four, five. If you lose count, just do an M14 and it'll tell you, measure it, do an M14, same thing, and just say it's 4.4, so it's 0.6, so you put that out, so 5, difference or whatever. We'll go back up, go to the Z tower, we'll go down, 
you know, measure it and just say it's plus. It reads 5.3. The others were 4 point something, it's 5. So you put that. So that's a difference of plus so much. So that's now telling you what your end stops are out to the amount of travel from the centre. So if it goes past the piece of tool still, what I've done is I've just kept a measurement, first measurement, and I said, right, centre is at 5mm, and then I said, right, this is below the tool still, this is above the tool still. If it's below, you then screw the contact out. So in other words, it's moving too far and you need, need to reduce it. Now, they say, do Z center, Z center, then do X center, X center, Y center, Y center, X check, center check, Y check, Z center, Z center, X, Z, Y check, and I say, yep, the old dog chase the tail again. To cut that down, I said, oh, don't do that, don't do this. What I done was I worked out the highest and the lowest. So if one is, say, 0.7 above, and the other one is 0.3 below, that means there's one millimeter travel difference, maximum, from the one that's up here to the one there. It's one millimeter. I don't think it's just a matter of turning because it's the way it moves the arms and all that. My idea of setting the print up is to keep the maximum print area at maximum volume. Putting the little screws in made it 2.6 less travel. So then I had to adjust it. So what you do is you find out which tower is the least amount out. The one that you don't have to screw out. The ones that are plus. That happened to be my Z. And you don't touch that because that's the minimum amount. All the others you are going to raise up to that. So some say, oh, screw it out half a turn you know so, so you got half a travel this way and that way half a travel this way no screw them all in on the bottom this is your limit switch little screw screw them all in the bottom have a nut underneath screw them in all in then that's your maximum find out which tower has got the least amount that you have to remove then adjust the other two so i said right it's one millimeter i then said right zip the say the x one millimeter now if you use an m2 like i recommended that's 0.4 of a millimeter so you do two and a half turns then you you look at the other one and it might be 0.2 difference to you know the y might be 0.2 difference to the x so you do it one millimeter less that 0.2 then you probe again but this time you go in the center and you come down and you find your center is no longer at zero go back in your config adjust that straight away upload it again home come down and adjust it until your five mil or your four mil slides under and then just touches check it with your piece of paper then go and measure your X, Y and Z heights again, note them, and they may still be the same, or there might be a slight variation, but now again, see what the difference is, you should get the, the highest one, the, the X, or the Z in this case, to be zero before the others, because it's staying stationary, so they should start become zero first, then it's just a matter of fine tuning the others, and it only took about three measurements, and it was done, so work out the maximum overall, set that, get your Z centre height always to zero then adjust those and so without any other adjustment just screwing them in and out in and out three times I managed to get it I just measured the offset and they, they moved about 1.8 and 1.6 odd millimeter so they're only 0.3 and 0.5 out so th that shows you how much to do so you do that and if you've built it and use those measurements there's only a 0.1 difference between the center and those so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.1 now that's fourth out without any adjustment any smooth right offsets or anything like that so that is where I'm up to at this present stage I'm not going to fine tune it anymore because when you start printing you then see how much it's squeezing the filament and how even it is and gaps and all that and then I can get a better visual feedback that way so that's done once that's all set I'll then set up the probe again to suit the L bracket I've got and then it should be right to print you can make the fine adjustments from the mean of pages of information on the web but I'm showing you how to get your machine up to this stage how to get it square how to calibrate it to get your printing then that's a fine fine tuning and then that is up to you how long and how much effort you want to put in so as always thanks for watching and I hope you found this series informative and you've got a lot and it's got you to think a bit outside the square outside the 140 millimeter square if you enjoyed it tell your friends if you haven't enjoyed it tell me so until next time thanks for watching